This video is not about how to become an amazing data analyst. It's about learning what you need to land your first data analyst role. I've completed so many certifications and courses and have well over half a decade of experience working with complex big data. And I wanna utilize all of my knowledge in the data field to give you a genuine pathway for breaking into the world of data analytics. First and foremost, strong technical and analytical skills are a must. Data analysis involves interpreting complex data sets to identify trends, patterns, and insights. Employers want to hire people who can navigate through data with ease, employing various statistical techniques and analytical tools to derive meaningful conclusions. Without having a strong foundation in terms of your technical and analytical capabilities, you won't be able to focus on solving business-critical problems as you'll be too busy thinking about whether or not you can create this visualization in Tableau, how to write some code in SQL, or what formulas to use in Excel. The core data analyst analytical skills you want to focus on would be around the topics of statistics and probability, and the core technical skills you want to focus on would be spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel, SQL, a data visualization tool like Tableau or Power BI, and a programming language like Python, or are. Now, there are so many resources out there where you can learn these skills, but if you're looking for a course where you can learn all of the technical and analytical skills, then look no further than Simply Learn's Data Analyst course in collaboration with IBM. By taking this course, you can become a data analyst, a job that comes with an average pay of almost 70,000 US dollars. The course is well established and has over 40,000 reviews. And just by reading a couple, you can see that students are very happy with the learning experience. The course is for both freshers and working professionals, and it also includes live data analytics online classes by industry experts and ask me anything sessions and hackathons from IBM. You'd learn business analytics with Excel, how to work with SQL databases, how to perform data analytics with Python, and even learn how to perform machine learning. You'd also learn R for data science and data analytics, and how to create meaningful visualizations in Tableau. And of course, you'd get to do your capstone project at the end to bring together and showcase everything you learned, not to mention the other 20 plus projects that you can also do. The data analyst course can be completed in 12 months if you dedicate a few hours daily to learning and you'd get an industry recognized data analyst master's certificate from Simply Learn at the end. Simply Learn also has courses in collaboration with leading universities such as Caltech, Purdue, Brown, and many others. So if you want to take a big step towards a career in data analytics, check out Simply Learn's data analyst, data science, and business analytics courses using the links in the description below. And a big shout out to Simply Learn for sponsoring this video. So I recommend starting with Excel and SQL. They're the most popular tools out there and mastering these will give you an extremely strong starting point on which you can build your career. Focus on pivot tables, pivot charts, and the most popular formulas when it comes to Excel and focus on queries that help with extracting and analyzing data in SQL rather than queries tailored to creating and altering databases. As a beginner data analyst in the field, it's highly unlikely that you'll be asked to do data modeling and building databases and managing them. That's why I suggest you spend your time wisely and efficiently on data analysis queries. And just on the most popular Excel formulas and functions, actually, I gather them into a single Excel file to make it easy for you to quickly reference, understand, and use them on a daily basis. I included real life examples and explanations to help you with actually applying the formulas in a business context. I'll I'll leave the link in the description below in case you want to check it out. Now, as far as the programming languages go, Python is certainly my preference, but that does not mean that learning something else like R is useless. Python is a general programming language and you can do endless things with it. So if you do decide to learn Python, make sure you learn Python with a focus specifically on data 
analytics. So focus on the pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn libraries, and scipy and scikit-learn in case you're interested in machine learning. And last but not least, let's talk about the importance of data visualization and BI tools. Imagine you've already put in so much hard work extracting, cleaning, and transforming your data, but your end visuals look crap. You will struggle to get and retain people's attention and ultimately struggle with getting your points across. This is why it's crucial to produce eye-catching, aesthetic, and meaningful visualizations. Now, whether you do this in Tableau or Power BI doesn't really matter. Just learn the one that the companies you wanna apply to use. And I'm only mentioning these two tools here because even though there are so many Vis tools out there, Tableau and Power BI are by far the most popular. No point in learning something that very few people and companies use, right? And just to touch on the analytical skills a bit more. And by analytical skills, I mean problem solving, innovative and creative skills, but probably what you're most interested in is math skills. I'd say for entry level roles, knowing some basic descriptive statistics like mean, median, whether or not your data is skewed should be a great starting point. I've learned about probability, optimization, advanced econometrics and statistics during my bachelor's and master's degree. And while it does come in handy that I've studied them and know them, it won't make a huge difference when you're just starting out. Of course, how much statistics and probability knowledge you need will always depend on the exact role, but a good rule of thumb would be the more data science -y your role gets, the more math you'll need. Once you have strong foundational, analytical, and technical skills, it's time to build your data analyst portfolio to showcase everything you know. When creating your projects, keep in mind that it's not necessarily the most sophisticated code or the most complicated visuals that distinguish a good project from a truly great one. It can be as simple as a clean and concise write-up, a nice front end to your project, a well-structured table of contents. You can easily check out what good looks like using my ultimate portfolio template as it contains four projects of mine with exclusive end-to-end -end expert write-ups, presentations, and detailed summaries. Think of the Ultimate Portfolio as a one-stop shop for all of your projects, where you can publish your entire data portfolio to the web without having to code anything. I'll put the link in the description below. Make sure you have a look. In terms of how many projects and what types of projects you should have, I'd recommend building a diverse portfolio with anywhere between three to five projects covering all of the tools you know how to use. So tools like Excel, SQL, Python or R and Tableau or Power BI and projects covering various steps of the data analysis workflow, such as extracting data, cleaning and manipulating data, visualizing data and communicating your insights. I actually have a whole dedicated portfolio project playlist with end-to-end -end projects covering all of the mentioned tools and data analysis workflows. The videos walk you through step-by-step -step on how you can create an Excel dashboard, all the way from capturing your data through transforming your data to building your Excel dashboard or how to do exploratory data analysis or EDA in Python using the pandas library or natural language processing using the NLTK library and lots of other Tableau projects to produce amazing looking end visuals to really make your projects stand out. Not to mention a full SQL database tutorial, of course. So if you're looking for a fast and efficient way to build multiple projects, make sure to check out the portfolio project playlist and use the ultimate portfolio to create your very own data portfolio. Of course, there are other places to find great projects as well. One of my favorites is definitely Kaggle, where you can search for whatever data sets you're interested in. You could search customer churn, marketing analytics, or HR analytics, for example. You can then actually check out the data sets using the data card section, and you can also quickly see what others have been up to with the same data set using the code section. The discussion page is also very useful as this is the place where fellow data enthusiasts answer each other's questions. Next up, let's talk about resumes. When applying for data analyst roles, it's essential to tailor your resume to each job application. Now, I do not mean write a new unique resume for each job you apply to, but what I do mean is that you should read the job description of the roles you wanna apply to carefully and tailor your resume to emphasize the skills and knowledge you have 
that matches the skills and knowledge the advertised roles require you to have. So have a standard resume template and make small tweaks to it for the specific jobs you're applying to. By the way, I have various resume templates, both paid and free. I'll leave the links in the description below so you can check out the formatting, structure, and the wording used. To summarize the main techniques and the most important things to keep in mind when writing your data analyst resume, please keep in mind that the more relevant the experience, the project, the uni degree, the higher up it should feature on your resume. I think it's much better to include less but relevant data experience and skills than to fill up your page with experiences and skills that have nothing to do with data. Say for example, you have some experience in industries and roles completely non-related to data, but you've completed many projects, have a strong portfolio, and also have some relevant certifications. Make sure you put your projects and your certificates at the top of your resume rather than your non-relevant experience. Also, make sure to include keywords that recruiters might look for. So keywords like Excel, Python, SQL, or Tableau, and make sure you focus on highlighting how you solve the specific problems using these tools. And this is a big one, a big mistake I see lots of people make when writing about their experiences. Don't just state what you did. Explain why you did what you did, how you came up with the solution, and what the benefit was of solving this problem. Think of the resume round as the quick elimination round in the job application process, as you'll never get hired straight after, but you can easily get rejected straight away. Your goal is to show recruiters that you have enough credibility, qualifications, and skills to get that crucial interview where you can then shine. And I hear you asking, how can I shine at these interviews? Well, my biggest advice would be to prepare and over prepare. Research the company, familiarize yourself with their industry and data needs, and be ready to discuss your skills, knowledge, and experiences, and how they relate to the specific role. And let me just highlight the importance on the specific role here. When you're at an interview, you're interviewing for not just a data analyst job, you're interviewing for the specific data analyst job, that specific company within that specific industry. Start by researching the company and its culture, products or services, and the industry and the trends. This will help you tailor your responses and demonstrate your interest and the enthusiasm for the role. Review the job description and identify the key qualifications and requirements. Be prepared to discuss how your experiences and skills align with these requirements and how you can contribute to the company's success. Practice answering common data analyst interview questions, such as questions about your technical skills, problem solving abilities, and past experiences. Consider preparing examples to illustrate your responses and demonstrate your capabilities. And this is where having an awesome portfolio can help a lot. And a very important one, do not forget to prepare questions to ask the interviewer. Asking thoughtful questions not only shows your interest in the role, but also provides an opportunity for you to learn more about the company and its culture. Remember, the interview is a two-way interview. It's for the hiring manager to find out if you're the ideal person for the job, but it's also for you to find out if the company is the ideal place for you to work at. And I said ideal person here, because it's the ideal person and not the best person who will get the job. Now, of course, the best candidate can also be the ideal candidate, but the ideal candidate may not actually be the best candidate. It's all about how you can provide value to the team. You'll be joining how your skills, knowledge, and experience can complement the already existing skills, knowledge, and experiences in the team. And last, but certainly not least, do not take rejections personally. If you get a rejection, try and learn something from that experience and be just 1% better the next time. With all this said, getting your first role within the world of data analytics is not easy. In fact, it may be extremely difficult at times. I don't wanna lie to you and say that by following the tips and advice I detailed in this video, you'll be guaranteed a data analyst job. But I am very confident that if you do follow these steps and keep on trying and learning, you will eventually get there. I want you to know that I got rejected hundreds of times throughout my career, and yet here I am still standing, breathing, and trying to live my best life. I want you to know that if I could do it, you can definitely do it too. I really hope you enjoy content like this, and if you do, make sure to check out some of my other videos. 
right here. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you in the next one.